All right, this video is going to be a deep dive into items and services in FreshBooks. We're going to talk about the diff what the difference is, and we're going to talk about the best practices and how to use them properly and why it's important to use them properly. I'm going to start with the wrong way that I see people using them, and then I'll tell you the right way. And then I've got a couple of insider tips to share so you can really be a pro at your business bookkeeping. Let's dive in. So there's a good chance that you've already been doing something wrong because you probably started your FreshBooks account and you needed to send an invoice. And you went to straight in to create new invoice and you started typing down here in these lines. And this is not the best way to do it because as soon as you do that, you'll be making an item every line. So if you write, for instance, two hours of consulting, and then maybe you added another line item like um, Photoshop design work, for billboard. And I can go on and on and on, but you get the point. Each time you do this, each one of those things that you just wrote is going to be created in your items list. And something similar is going to happen for services. Say you go to projects and you're creating a new project and you're going to start to add a service down here and you're going to type great service. You just added great service to your services list. And what you're supposed to do is click add a service and select from your drop down list. We don't want to create items and services on the fly like this. So, what's the right way? Well, the right way is to come to the gear icon and then to items and services right here, y'all. But even before that, I want you to first go on a 10 minute walk and I want you to really think about what it is that you do in your business. And then I want you to come home and I want you to get a piece of paper and a pencil. And I want you to write down the 10, 15, maybe 20 things that you do or that you hope to do. These are going to be generic. They're not going to have a client's name. They're not going to have like a very specific number. It's going to be something like design services, consulting services, social media advertising, whole house pressure washing, custom welding, corporate training. See what I'm doing here? Those are the kind of things that need to be added. Very high level. So let's take a gander here. We have the ability to create a new item. This is the toggle, y'all, items and services. We're gonna create a new item. You can enter an item name, enter a description. You also don't have to put that there. Um, it will start to push over to things like on your invoices. So, you know, be, you might just wanna put it as the name. You can put your rate that you're charging, add taxes if you want. Um, y'all, this track inventory button, um, don't pay attention to it. People who have inventory should not be using FreshBooks. This isn't a real inventory tracking feature. It's really the only place you'll even see it in FreshBooks. It doesn't show up on your balance sheet where it needs to be. I, I just wish they wouldn't have even built it necessarily because it's probably going to make you think that FreshBooks has inventory tracking. And if you need inventory tracking, you should not be using FreshBooks. So this is how we create our list. If you have a lot of things that you sell, you can import items if you have a CSV file. Um, but honestly, like making that CSV file, it, it's probably just quicker to just go create them in here because again, I want your list to be small. If you're using FreshBooks, your list ideally needs to be fairly small. Now let's look at create new service. Enter the name of your service, you know, hourly consulting description and taxes. So here it starts to get a little more interesting. Billable. Are you going to push this to client invoices? If you're not, like one of the services I think you could add if you want to start getting a lot out of the projects feature, you can create a non-billable service like admin time or overhead time, something like that. And that would be an example of something that wouldn't be billable and you just want to know for yourself how much time you're spending doing that type of thing. Um, this box right here automatically add this service to all new projects. So um, I'm beginning to think that it might be not a bad idea to select that for several of your most common tasks because what's going to happen is when you go to start tracking time inside of a project, which I hope you watch all my videos and start coming to my office hours and learn about how to use projects or classifying expenses toward, to clients, um, but I hope you learn how to use this and if you're tracking time and you select that the time is for a project. If you don't have this service as a part of the project, it's not going to give it to you in your drop down for your tracking time. 
So your common ones, you really can check this box, automatically add this service to all new projects. You don't have to do this service for that project. It just becomes available for you. All right, before I get to the insider tips, I'd love to ask for you to subscribe to this channel and to like this video. It helps me a lot because I do hope to monetize this channel one day, but it also helps others see this video. If you signal to YouTube that it's a good video and it's a good channel by subscribing and liking it. So some insider tips. Let's say your list gets really long. Like you might've just been typing things. So this is the demo account. I didn't create these, but let's say we just wanted to um, get rid of these. We could archive them or delete them. If we wanted to change the names, we go into them and we can edit it. And each name has to be unique. So if you get an error message saying that you can't name it this, you have to go change the other name. Now some insider tips for services. If you click on a couple of these, I'll show you the bulk actions. You have a little bit more. You can set it as non-billable and then conversely as billable um, if you select multiple boxes. And you could also all at once say, add these to all new projects. Like I was just saying, like you might wanna have a little bit longer list that is available to you when you're in a project. So this is a quick way to do that instead of opening up each one and doing it manually. Then I wanna tell you about archiving and deleting. So what happens is that this list is kind of like, um, it's a database. And by having it not archived or deleted, it's gonna always be there for you to read whenever you're in the invoice and you wanna add an item or you wanna add a service. So if you archive or delete things, when you're in the invoice, it will not be available to you. So I want you to always, when you're in an invoice or in a project and you're starting to find yourself typing about what the work you're gonna be doing is, try very hard to never add a new one and just think, I bet I have something in my list that I, you know, I thought of a long time ago when I first started my business. I bet I have something in my list. Let me scroll till I find it. And by archiving and deleting items, you shorten that list. So you're only looking at the 10, 15 things that you're currently doing. You know, maybe some of these things are pretty, pretty old. Your business has changed. Go ahead and get those off the list. So that way you'll be more likely to not have, feel the need to type in whenever you're in those invoices. So the next insider tip is, is you're going to tell me, Kate, but I really want more detail. I'm in an invoice and we're going to pick one of our generic events. Environmental design, that's pretty generic. And remember, we're not, we don't like these. We're not typing two hours of consulting. We're not typing Photoshop design work for a billboard, but we want to know some detail. It's this area right here, y'all. This is where you add your detail. Um, so here I wrote site study for Brazos Watershed. That is where we put the detail. We are not going to write site study for Brazos Watershed here in a new invoice line item. Okay. All right. I hope you learned something that you didn't know before you watched this video. Reach out to me if you need help. If you would like to join a community of FreshBooks users, entrepreneurs who are using FreshBooks as their bookkeeping, please reach out and I can let you know about office hours. I offer free versions of these once a month. Look down below for the link to that and you can check it out. All right, let's wrap up. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson and I help businesses build their business legacy.